Not so long ago, Alain Mareko's life was ordinary and unremarkable. He worked as a bailiff and loved his job. The man had a loving wife and three wonderful children to whom he tried to devote all his free time. Alain worked a lot and sometimes considered himself guilty of this because he understood that the family needed more attention and care. He truly loved his job because he enjoyed executing court decisions, sending letters, and moving among people with influence in France. Everything changed one night when the police arrived at Alina's house and began knocking on the door, demanding that the owner of the house open it for them as soon as possible. Once on the doorstep of the house, law enforcement officers accused the man and his wife of a terrible crime, believing that they had taken advantage of defenseless children. Such an accusation offends Alain and Edith, since they are loving parents and would never dare to do something like that. Despite the couple's claims, the police arrest them and force the children to pack up so they can be sent to a temporary shelter. Sebastian and little Cecile are very frightened, so their father and mother try to calm them down, but the police prohibit them from approaching their own children. In the morning, the inspector and his subordinates conduct a search, during which they find a magazine with photographs of naked men. Alain tries to explain that his wife bought it as a joke, to tease her married sister, but the police do not take the man's testimony into account. They also find a tape, assuming that it contains an adult video, and decide to immediately verify this. Turning on the TV, the police are disappointed, since the cassette recorded a football match that interested Alain. Having handcuffed the man, the law enforcement officers take him to the office of the law firm where he works. Alain is given a list of suspects and asked to identify one of them. From the legal background, he learns that he sent letters with a court decision to one of the men, but does not know him personally. After this, Alain is taken to the police station, where he is interrogated, showing photos of the alleged culprits. The man is unable to identify someone, which irritates the inspector, who unconditionally considers him a criminal who has committed terrible acts against children. According to the testimony of one of the detainees, Alan and his wife took part in prohibited sexual games, filmed videos for adults, and treated their children in a special way. The man denies all of the above because he is a decent husband and father, but his words are ignored by the police. After preliminary interrogation, Alan is sent to a cell, where he is forced to undress and undergo a thorough examination. In one of the cells, he notices his wife, but they are forbidden to communicate, believing that they might enter into a criminal conspiracy. The next morning, the investigating judge denies Alain's release, since his youngest son gave evidence only confirming his father's guilt. A little later, the suspect is interrogated at the police station, where intimate details of his life are learned. He did not spend enough time with his wife, and they often argued, but this has nothing to do with the terrible charge, according to which Alain faces twenty years in prison. In the evening, the inspector changes his anger to mercy and offers an agreement. Alain admits his guilt in the crime regarding the children, and his wife will be released and allowed to return home. The man is ready to take the blame, but only if he can talk to Edith. The policeman refuses to accept his conditions and sends Alain back to jail. Hubert soon visits him. Delarue is a lawyer who decided to take on the case of the accused in order to achieve an acquittal, since the whole case is based on testimony, but not actual evidence. At the next meeting with Judge Burgo, the lawyer insists on the presumption of innocence, but the representative of the law refuses the request and extends Alain's arrest without the right to post bail. During a dialogue with the judge, the prosecutor also insists on arrest, as a result of which the man ends up in prison again. The lawyer understands that such an accusation is terrible and that other prisoners may treat Alain with cruelty, so he asks not to mention his article and to communicate less with his cellmates. Finding himself in a real prison, Alain has a hard time coping with reality because he is immediately faced with an aggressive attitude from the prisoners. They do not allow him to occupy the vacant bed and avoid dialogue with the new neighbor. In the evening, the prisoners watch TV, which shows a news story about the crime in the so-called morning case. Alain is afraid that the report will not include a name or photo, realizing that he will face consequences for this. 
A couple of days later, the lawyer visits the client and reports that the testimony of witnesses is ambiguous. In addition, there is still no evidence of his guilt. The accusation is based only on the words of people accused of a crime against their children, who indicated him as an accomplice. Burgo also relies on the interrogations of Alain's son. But Sebastian was asked tricky questions, and the child could not understand them, so he answered in a way that was beneficial to the police. As it turned out, Alain's son's classmate suffered the most in this case, and perhaps it was he who influenced him. At the next meeting, the investigating judge interrogates Alain, pointing out that he has an unconventional orientation. The lawyer tries to intervene in the conversation, but Burgo fundamentally ignores his words and comments. Not wanting to listen to the excuses of the culprit and Hubert, the judge sends Alain back to jail. Soon, the prisoner is visited and supported by his sister, who believes in his innocence and hopes for a fair trial. At the next interrogation, the Aurelies are present. Grenon and Miriam the Badawi are the ones who accuse Alain of doing bad things to their children. Hubert gets into the dialogue and with a couple of simple questions confirms that the women are confused in their testimony and cannot give the exact dates of the crimes. Burgos sees this, but asks not to put pressure on the witnesses, taking into account only their words confirming Alain's guilt. Despite the deplorable state of affairs, Hubert is confident that his client will soon be released and promises to resolve this issue. Sometime later, Alain is taken home again, where he manages to see his wife. The police conduct a search to find evidence confirming their guilt, but do not find anything worthwhile. Upon returning to prison, Alain realizes how much he loves Edith and writes letters to her in which he promises to be with her until the end of his days. Soon the man is visited by the director of a law firm, who asks him to write a letter of resignation and sell the office of the bailiff, since his name was covered in the press and the man does not want a scandal. A couple of weeks later, Alain receives a response from the appeal court, which rejected the possibility of release. The man is disappointed, but letters from his wife and children cheer him up, giving him hope and faith in the best. A little more time passes and Alain, together with other prisoners, celebrates the new year. This event does not make him happy at all, because he is still behind bars and the lawyer cannot change this in any way. Soon, Tessie visits her brother again and reports that their mother has fallen asleep in eternal sleep. After Alina was sent to prison, the woman refused to eat and became very ill, which is why she died. Having learned the terrible news, the man loses consciousness, but agrees to continue the interrogation, during which he cries, experiencing a painful loss. The next morning, Alain is taken to his parents' house so that he can meet his father and say goodbye to his late mother. A little later, he sees a news story in which they report new testimony in the mourning case. The criminals indicate that one of the girls lost her life, but cannot determine the place where she was buried. The investigation process gets out of control, and the lawyer is unable to talk to the judge, as he is concerned about the search for the missing body. Alain is worried about the loss of his mother, and the psychologist sends him to a clinic for treatment. The man is afraid to return to prison, so he is transferred to a psychiatric hospital with stricter control. During the next interrogation, Burgo points out that Alain decided to shave and get a haircut during the period when he committed terrible crimes. The investigating judge considers this an attempt to disguise himself and does not believe in a coincidence. Realizing that there is no justice, Alain takes a pack of pills to commit suicide. After looking at his mother's photo, he promises to join her soon and falls asleep. The doctors manage to save Alain, who learned good news from the lawyer. Edith was released, and Burgo was transferred to Paris, which will allow him to win the case by communicating with a more adequate judge. Believing again that he will be released, Alain packs his things and waits for a court decision, but in the morning he receives another refusal. A few months later, Tessie and her father visit the prisoner and report that Edith has cut off all means of contacting her. Having learned that his wife betrayed him and upon being released found another man, Alain again decides to take his own life. After spending almost 20 months in prison, the man writes letters to all authorities with the hope of drawing attention to the injustice of the trial.
Not wanting to tolerate this, he refuses to eat and goes on a hunger strike. Alan's condition is gradually deteriorating, which is why he is rapidly losing weight and suffering from dizziness. Soon the man faces another health problem. He loses sensation in his legs and becomes bedridden. A little more time passes and Alain finally loses touch with the real world, as he is unable to remember the name of his wife and children or say their age. At night the man has nightmares and literally goes crazy, but in the morning he learns that he will be released. First he is sent to a special hospital, where Alain learns to eat, taste, and walk again. His niece bails him out, thanks to which the man is released, not allowing him to leave the farm. At night he tries to call his wife to talk to her, but Edith doesn't care about Alain, because she doesn't love him anymore. Sometime later, the wife asks to take custody of the younger children, but refuses the eldest son, considering him a difficult teenager who belongs in an orphanage. At the first open meeting, Badawi, under pressure from her lawyer, admits that she slandered two of the alleged perpetrators. A little later, the judge calls her son to testify, but he, being the victim, cannot identify the criminals and points to other people, which only confirms the prisoner's lack of guilt. As soon as the boy is called a liar, Badawi stands up for his son and decides to make a sincere confession. She states that only she and her husband, as well as Grenin and her boyfriend, are guilty. The court is shocked by the statement and adjourns the hearing to make a decision. Burgo is called in for questioning, realizing that he was creating false witness statements in order to put innocent people behind bars. Despite all the above and sincere confession, the court is afraid to pass acquittals and prove its inconsistency. The judge finds everyone present guilty, including Alain, and sentences him to 18 months of probation. Alain is disappointed because he is accused of a crime against his own son and is again trying to take his own life. After spending two days in a coma, he wakes up in hospital and starts life with a clean slate. On December 1st, 2005, Alina and the other accused were acquitted, removing all suspicion from them. On March 14th, 2007, the man was reinstated as a bailiff. On April 24th, 2009, Judge Burgo was found guilty and sentenced to financial fine. Thanks for watching. Hope you like and subscribe.